Hi there, I'm Destiny from Nifty Knittings and today I'm going to walk you through the steps for how to knit this really fun, really simple beach bag. I'm using Bernat Maker Outdoor. It's an outdoor yarn that's mold and fade resistant in a solid color and also a self-striping color. So the bottom of the bag is knit with the solid color. Basically we're going to knit a rectangle and then pick, pick up stitches all around the edges switch to the self-striping yarn and knit the majority of the bag. We'll place markers for where the handles will go and uh, we'll bind off with an I-cord edging and we'll add some fun grommets and rope handles. Alright, so let's get started. We're gonna start with the solid color. I'm using Royal Blue and US 10 knitting needles. For the purposes of this video, I'm just going to make a small mini bag, um, but you will want to long tail cast on 50 stitches with your solid color, and then knit every row until it's 4 inches wide. So I just have a couple inches here and I've cast on 20 stitches. So once you have your little rectangle, we are going to switch to US 11 needles. You can either use a whole different circular or I'm using an interchangeable set so I'm just going to change my right hand needle to an 11 and then we're going to knit across all the stitches on our needle and then we will pick up stitches around the other three sides of our little rectangle. Okay and this is a 32 inch length circular. So I'm knitting onto the 11s. I'm just going to knit the stitches that I have on my needle. Okay, I've knit across all the stitches on my needle with the US 11 needles. So that should be 50 for the full size bag. And then we're just going to turn our work, rotate it this way, and pick up one stitch for each garter ridge. So you should have 14 on each side of the short sides of your rectangle. So. To pick up and knit the stitches, you're just going to insert your needle into that garter ridge, bring your yarn around to knit, and pull it through. Let's try that one more time here. Hopefully you can see this okay. This yarn's a little dark. Okay, so there's one stitch. And then we're going to do that for each of these garter ridges. So here's the next one. Bring your yarn around and pull it through. You can also use a crochet hook if it's a little hard to get in there. Or you can use your left side of your needle to pick them up. Just make sure you have 14 when you're done with the short side. Okay, I think I have one more to go here. Okay, so that's the short side. And then we're going to pick up and knit 50 along our cast on edge. I just have a small swatch here, so I'll just pick up and knit 20. And I'm just going to use the magic loop method since I just have a small little swatch, but your cable should stretch just fine for the full size bag. Okay, so this part's a little hard to see. Let's see if I can get this to focus. So you want to try and find your cast on edge and pick up one stitch for each cast on bump. Doesn't have to be perfect. Just the bottom of your bag. Let's see, where are we here?
Okay, so I have the cast on edge stitches picked up and now we're going to rotate the work again and pick up the last 14 stitches from the short side. Okay, I have my stitches picked up along all four sides and now you'll want to check and make sure that you have 128 stitches total and then we're just going to place a marker to mark the beginning of our round. Again, I'm using the magic loop method just because I have such a small little swatch but your stitches sh should fit comfortably on a 32 inch circular. And now we're going to join our striping color and I am using fresh royal blue stripes. It's a mix of royal blue and white. So I wanted to join the white color and sometimes the skein will start with white or blue in the middle. It's, it's just kind of a gamble. This one happens to start with white. Um, if it doesn't, you can always pull from the outside of the skein. And I found that the stripes are pretty even in these balls, except sometimes they don't start with a full color stripe. It's, sometimes it's just half, and if it's just half, I've found the other half on the outside of the ball. It probably makes no sense. Basically, you want to make sure when you're knitting with your stripes, you should have about six to six and a half rounds of each color, and if you don't, then you'll want to join a little bit more. Like say if you only get three rounds of white, then you'll probably want to cut your yarn and join it to the other white on the outside of the ball. So just as long as you have about six rounds in each color, you should be just fine. Okay, this looks like a kind of a shorter section, so I bet I wouldn't have enough for six rounds. So I would probably cut the yarn here once I've knitted all this white and rejoin it to the white on the outside and keep going. Other than that, I found that um, every, every stripe brown is the same sometimes just the beginning and the end are not. Okay, so now I'm just gonna join the white yarn. And this is the nice mindless part where you just get to start knitting around and around. Let me find my end here. Okay, I found the end of my white yarn. And I'm just going to hold it in my left hand and just start knitting with it. So at this point we can just knit around and just make sure you have about six, six and a half rounds of each color. I found that stripes won't be exactly six rounds, it's usually six and a little bit more. And then there's also a fun little technique I'm going to show you when we get to our first color change for how to make the bag jogless. So I'll show you when we get to that part. I just finished my first white stripe and there should be about six rounds of each color. I'm just doing three for the purposes of this video and then blue will be up next. So for these color changes, to make them appear jogless, I'm going to show you a little trick. As you can see, this part of this blue stripe is a little bit wider than this part, but you don't see a clear stitch where that color, hap where that color change happened. So I'm going to show you how I do that. So when you get to the new color in your striped yarn, so I've been knitting with white and now it's going to be blue. I'm just going to start knitting with the blue and knit one full round until you get right back around to that very first blue stitch and then we'll do a little trick. I'm almost back to my first blue stitch. I have three more stitches here and your color changes probably won't happen at the beginning of your round. That's just the nature of self-striping yarn. And if you don't mind jogs in your knitting, you can just keep on knitting your bag until you get to close to the end. So when you get back to that first blue stitch, you're going to lift up the right leg of the white stitch below. Let me see if I can zoom in here. So I use my right needle to just lift up the right leg of the stitch below and place it on my needle. So you have a blue stitch and a white stitch right next to each other. And then we're just going to knit those two stitches together with the blue. 
and keep on going. And that'll make a nice jogless color change. So every time you have a new color pop up, you'll knit around with that new color until you get to the first stitch that you knitted with that color. And then you'll lift up that stitch below and knit it together with the stitch on your needle. So we're just gonna keep plugging away, knitting every round until you have four blue stripe sections. So I have one, two, three, four, and then the very last blue stripe section, I'll show you how to mark where you're gonna put your handles. And then I'll show you how we do this bind off. Okay, once we get to our last blue stripe, you will have five white stripes, four blue stripes, and then on that fifth and last blue stripe, that's where we'll add markers for our handles so we can add grommets later. So for my sample here, I've just done a few white stripes and I'm on my, my last blue stripe. So you'll want to knit two rounds in blue. And the way that the self-striping yarn worked out for me is it changed kind of in the middle of the round. So I have two to three, two and a half-ish rounds of blue. So two on this side, and then three on this side. As long as you have two, then you're ready to place your markers. Okay, so we're just going to knit six and place that first marker. And I'll show you how we do that. So we wanna use locking stitch markers to keep them in place. We do not wanna keep them on the needle. After you've knit your stitches, we're just going to place a marker on that strand in between stitches right here. And lock it in place. And then knit until you need to place your next marker. So we'll knit um, 38 and then place another marker. So all in all, we'll be placing eight markers all the way around the whole bag. And then I'll show you what we do next. I've placed my eight markers, which will be where our grommets will go and we're all finished. You don't have to use grommets, but this yarn is very stretchy, so I would really recommend it so that the, the um, handles don't stretch out the bag. And um, we didn't make buttonholes or yarn overs because, again, the yarn is so stretchy that the grommets would just pop right out. So we'll just be putting the grommets right through these stitches where we have our markers placed. But for now, we're just going to leave the markers there on the stitches and we are going to knit two rounds even in blue. I've knitted two rounds in blue and now we are going to work um, an I-cord bind off. It gives it a nice neat edge that won't roll too much. Let's see if I can focus this here. Just a nice pretty bind off and it's actually really simple. Okay, so I'll show you how we're going to do that. So first, we have to add three stitches to our needles here. So I'm just gonna do a knitted cast on, and that is where you knit the stitch, but leave this loop on the needle, twist the loop on your right needle, and put it back, or put it on your left needle. I'll show you that a couple more times. So you're basically knitting the stitch but leaving the first loop on the needle focus focus and then twisting this one around and putting it on your left needle and we need three so one more time knit twist and place it on your needle. So now we have three extra stitches. So what we're going to do is knit two and then knit these next two stitches together through the back loop. So take your needle through the back loop of both stitches together and knit them together. If I can get that in there. And I'll show you this several more times. So, move this over. The camera just does not want to focus. Okay, so now we have three stitches on the right needle. Again, 
And we're gonna just slip them to the left needle and we repeat those exact same steps. So we're just going to knit two and then knit two together through the back loop. So we're basically binding off one stitch each time. And then slip them back to your left needle, purlwise, and keep repeating. Knit two, knit two together through the back loop. So we'll just keep repeating this until all of our stitches are bound off and it makes this nice pretty corded edge here. Once you have finished your I-cord bind off, you will have three stitches remaining on your needle and then we will seam them to the other end, the starting end of the bind off. So you want to cut your yarn and thread it onto a yarn needle. And right now our yarn is coming from the back left side from this stitch and we're going to move it over to this stitch and then start seaming them together. So we are just going to bring our yarn needle through that first stitch purlwise. Okay. And then looking at the cast on stitches, it is made up of three little V's. We're going to bring our yarn needle underneath both legs of a V. So the very first V, bring your yarn needle right underneath both legs. Pull that snug and then working from the needle we're going to slip this first stitch off knitwise and then go into the second stitch purlwise. Then going back to our cast on edge we go under the next V. Let's see right here under both legs of the V. Pull that through and then we're just repeating. We're slipping the first stitch off knitwise and then going into the second stitch purlwise. And then back to the cast on edge going into that last V under both legs of that V. Oops, my needle slipped out there but that's okay. So that last loop that was on the needle, we're just going to go, let's see, knitwise through that last loop that was on the needle. And pull that nice and snug. And it makes a nice, see if we can focus here, makes a nice seamless graft. And then I like to take the working yarn and bring it back through underneath the cord and then weave in my ends on the wrong side. And that's it. So now that our bag is done, we still have our eight locking stitch markers in place. And this is where we're going to place our grommets. So I like to place mine just right in that hole where our locking stitch marker is. You can do the top or the bottom. I went with the bottom. Either is fine as long as you are consistent with the rest of the rest of the grommets. Okay, so essentially we are going to be kind of folding in the sides of the bag. So these two stitch markers are where we'll place one grommet and these two stitch markers are where we'll place another. So we'll kind of be pinching in the ends like this for our grommets. I'll show you that on my large bag here, my full size bag. Okay, I've taken out the handles for this side. So where your stitch markers are, you'll pinch together and place a grommet through those two stitch markers through the hole that they're marking and then same for this side. So you're just kind of pinching the, the, the end of the bag together like this. 
So one grommet here, one grommet here. And the grommets that I'm using are half inch. I am just, I found a grommet kit at Joann's, just a half inch grommet kit. I used white, you can use silver or whatever color you like. And I'll show you kind of how to put that together. So, oops. so this little tool, you'll rest, this is the, the right side of the grommet, you'll rest this inside of this little tool so it doesn't get bent when you hammer it. Okay, and this will be the outside of the grommet. It'll essentially kind of go together like this with the fabric in the middle. And there's a little tool that you hold in place and then you'll hammer it together. So, so taking the right side, come on out of there. Let's get this one. Okay, so taking the right side of the grommet, we're going to go through the front side of the bag and find the hole that our stitch marker is in. Then we take out our stitch marker, put the grommet through the hole, This yarn is super stretchy, so you just kind of want to stretch it around. Stretch it through the hole. Okay, so that's through one side. And remember, we're doing two, kind of pinching it together like this. So we also need to get the grommet through this hole in the back. So I just kind of like to put it in first and then take out my stitch marker just so I don't lose my spot. A little hard to see here. Okay, so just kind of work the stitch around the grommet. Okay, so once you have that through both sides, you'll place the other end of your grommet on and you'll place the right side in this little tool down here. I'm not actually going to hammer this in because this isn't a very good surface for hammering. But we'll place this tool on top and then you just hammer it in three or four times and it'll be solid just like this one. And we'll repeat that for this little pinched area here and then two more on the other side of the bag. And then you'll have your nice little grommet holes. For the handles, I used a little bit of braided rope from the trim section at Joann's. They have all different kinds of trim, like a twisted cord would look really nice as well. And then I just cut the handles how long I wanted. And then I added a little bit of hot glue to the very end. Focus, please. There we go. So I just added a tiny bit of hot glue at the end just to keep it from fraying. But if you like the frayed look, you can just tie your knots and fray out the handles too. Once you have your rope handles cut, we're just gonna thread them through the grommets from the inside of the folded corner of the bag. So from the back to the front. And then tie a little knot in the end. And pull it nice and tight. And that's it. We'll repeat the same for this side of the bag and the other side. And then your beachcomber tote is all finished. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. You can find the full pattern at niftyknittings.com and feel free to subscribe for more patterns and tutorials.